So what does it mean that the search of Mar-a-Lago found dozens of empty file folders, sensitive documents mixed in with newspaper clippings and clothing? The inventory of what FBI agents seized there shows a chaotic tangle of mishandled material. It also leaves a lot of unanswered questions. Joining me to talk about all of this, John Dean, former Nixon White House counsel. John, it's wonderful to see you on this Saturday night. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'd like to start first with what the Trump lawyers, uh, how they described this conflict over these documents. They um, described it as similar to a dispute over, quote, an overdue library book, just very casually. Um, what's your reaction to that description? Well, when I first heard that, I, I thought, well, where would he get the library card? He got the library card, if that analogy works, and it doesn't, but he got the library card from the American people because he doesn't need any clearance to get top secret information. But the, the American people took away that library card last November and told him to get in everything he's borrowed under that card by the time he leaves. So he knew that well in advance. So it, it's the, the other problem, is that the reason it doesn't work is library books do not contain the nation's top secrets and an elaborate system around them to protect those secrets. A system and a process that he just totally chose to ignore. So it, it just doesn't work. It's like calling the argument that was made by that lawyer the equivalent of a Clarence Darrow argument. It just doesn't fly doesn't work, yeah. Um, what do you make of federal investigators finding these dozens of empty folders that were marked as classified? We're looking at some of the photos while I'm talking and some top secret documents mixed in with more mundane items like news clippings. Uh, what do you make of kind of what they found and, and how, they, how they kind of found this mixture of, of, of information together? The, the intermingling of material was certainly covered under the warrant that they were searching under because it wanted to know where the material was located, if it was classified material or national defense information. And that's exactly what they found. Uh, they found clothing, they found his passports in his desk drawer. Uh, so the empty folders uh, don't tell me a lot because Mr. Trump was always so chaotic and disorganized that I don't think he'd ever get anything back in the right folder. Uh, so this is just not surprising. It doesn't necessarily mean they're missing or they have been uh, somehow taken out. And I'm sure the FBI is now uh, getting them all back in order. Most of these documents, uh, Jessica, are well uh, indexed. So they know what he had, when he had it, and they can probably get it back in the right folder if they want to. And, and know how to organize it back. Um, I know on Friday we heard from um, Trump's own appointed attorney general, Bill Barr, and he said that the demand for a special master is a, is a red herring in all of this. And then he went on, I, we've got that clip, let's listen to it. The driver on this from the beginning was, the, it was you know, loads of classified information sitting in Mar-a-Lago. People say this was unprecedented. Well, it's also unprecedented for a president to take all this classified information and put him in a country club, okay? And how, how long is the government going to uh, try to get that back? You know, they jawbone for a year. They were deceived on the voluntary uh, actions taken. Uh, they then went and got a subpoena. They were deceived on that. Uh, they feel, and the record, the facts are starting to show that they were being jerked around. And, and again, pointing out that was uh, former President Trump's own attorney general. But John, what do you make of his comments, and what do you think the viewers should be taking away from from what they're hearing from him? I think that Bill Barr gave a very blunt uh, summary of the law and the situation. Uh, he's right on. Uh, these are not. Trump's documents to take anywhere. They were the governments, and the whole idea of a special master is just trying to stir up trouble and delay and confusion, and hopefully the judge, uh, who uh, probably would respect Barr, she may have been processed by Barr's Department of Justice, uh, here's what the former attorney general had to say, because he's actually just bluntly stating the law and the facts. And that I don't think it should be elevated it to anything other than what he said. And before we let you go, I, you know, we've talked about how unprecedented this all is. You obviously lived through key figure in Watergate, which at the time was also unprecedented. Um, 
if you can just zoom out for a second and, and give people kind of your thoughts on just what, what we're seeing, kind of give us, um, you know, the view from, from up top, kind of pulling back out and, and just kind of make sense of, of what we're seeing right now and how significant it is. Yeah, I, I actually had above top secret clearance and I can remember when the agents came to me and my secretary and gave us our briefing before we could get that higher clearance above top secret. And the point they wanted to make is when you're dealing with some of this intelligence, uh, you've got to remember that it's, it's human sources that are involved. And while you're reading the document isn't going to tell you the name of that source, the fact that that material is in that document, a sophisticated counterintelligence person can tell you where it comes from and how they got it. And such, they told us it's not only true with human sources, but we have electronic sources. This is back, of course, 50 years ago. It's only gotten more sophisticated. And they use, you know, everything from satellites to uh, laser beams to all kinds of things now uh, that make these much more sensitive that because uh, we have capabilities the, the our enemies don't even know about. So they said this is very precious material. It, it could cost lives, it could cost billions of dollars if it gets released mm -hmm. and therefore you have to follow a, a laid out process and uh, you can do this and that with the documents, you can't do this and that the other with them. So I was always impressed with the whole system. Uh, this was uh, the Secret Service at the Nixon White House used to go through the uh, White House at night and look for any secret, uh, top secret or secret or confidential material that was lying on anybody's desk. And they came to my office and said, listen, this was out. We want to return it to the person. Here's where it came from. And we'd like you to give them a little talk. So it was, it was sort of policed internally uh, in that era. And I suspect that followed in later uh, presidencies. So mm -hmm. Trump is just so ignoring the rules that it is blatant. And when other people ignore the rules as he have, they've paid consequence. They have gone to jail for this. Uh, Reality Winter, who decided to leak one page, uh, spent four years in jail. Uh, General Petraeus, who w wanted to collect information for convenience in a black book, uh, found himself really disqualified as a future president because of the way he handled classified information. So this is, this is very serious. And uh, Trump wants to treat it as a, a, uh, an overdue library book to make his followers think this is just a little deal. In fact, mm -hmm. it's a big deal, Jessica. Yeah, you've underscored that um, and, and really helped us understand it. Thank you so much, John Dean. We appreciate it. Thank you.